What's up you guys, my name is Brentai and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to make the perfect martini. Now, there is a few things involved, so I'm going to run through the equipment first and then I'll run through it about the spirits and all that sort of stuff. But, the most important thing, well, is a martini glass. I have two styles here, I have a classic one, this is a classic martini glass. And this one here is a crystal martini glass. You can make martinis in champagne coupes if you want as well, they look just as nice, but I thought if we're going for the perfect martini, we might as well have martini glasses. So I'm going to make in two today because there's a few different variations of perfect martinis. So we'll make in one in the, the classic martini style glass and we'll make in another one in the crystal style glass. Okay, so now onto equipment, mixing glass, Cocktail shaker as well as what you need. You can use a sort of like a mixing jug if you don't have a mixing glass, but you also need a, a, either a Boston shaker or a three-piece shaker. A jigger or a measure for measuring everything out. It is important that everything's measured. Uh, Hawthorne strainer, fine strainer as well, and also a bar spoon for mixing. Either a knife or a twist appeal device. I, I use have this nice little handy uh, thick tool here that takes off a nice little peel, which moves on to the next thing, a lemon. So this is really handy for taking out a twist on a lemon. Uh, I've got olives here as well, green olives. On to the best bit, the spirits. Now, this is our Beaky's Kirsty's Gin, which is a very nice premium gin that I'm going to be using. We also have our Beaky's Har, which again is another premium vodka. I'm not sponsored by them, by the way. They're just Scottish products and they're easy to get my hands on. And then we have some dry vermouth, extra dry vermouth. Can be martini, can be wormwood, whatever you want. So that's pretty much everything you're going to need. Now, before we can get on with making them, there is a few questions that need to be asked. So if you make it for a customer, there's a few questions you need to ask. First off is, do you want a gin martini or do you want a vodka martini? Hence why we have gin and vodka. I will be making one of each. Next question you should be asking the customer is, or person that you're making it for is, do you want it shaken or stirred? Again, because I'm making two, I'll make one shaken, I'll make one stirred. Third question you can ask them is, do you want it with an olive or do you want it with a lemon twist? Because we're making two, we'll make one with a twist, we'll make one with an olive. And the next question is, how dry do you want the martini? This is a, a bit of a weird one to get your head around. If they want it dry, you use less extra dry vermouth. The drier they want it, the less vermouth you use. Which can, sound, kind of sounds a bit silly, because you think, well, the drier they want it, maybe I should use more extra dry vermouth, but no. The drier they want the martini, the less vermouth you use. That being said, that's all the questions covered. I'm going to start by making a gin martini. We're going to make a gin martini. We're going to make it stirred and we're going to make it with a twist of lemon and we're going to have it medium dry. That being said, let's get on with making it. The first thing you should do when you're making a martini is you should chill your glass because you're putting obviously a cold liquid into it. You don't want it to be a warm glass. So ice, I usually use soda water off the gun. However, I don't have a gun at home, so I'm just going to use some water there, chill the glass, and then we'll stick it to one side. Mixing glass, add your ice, get your spirit. Obviously we're making a gin martini first, so we're gonna use our gin. Double shot, I am going to do double shot because I'm at home. About 45 mils, 45 to 50 mils, obviously depending on how, what the customer wants. 50 mils is a good standard, 45 make what I would consider the perfect one. Now we're gonna add our vermouth, so we're just gonna add a bar spoon, which is round about five mils, so add a bar spoon worth of vermouth into our mixing glass. Now comes the fun part. Bar spoon into the bottom, and you're gonna stir to dilute it. Now, you can speed this up if you actually put your hand all the way around the mixing glass and grasp it. Obviously, your hand is warm, the glass is cold, it's gonna heat the glass up and melt the ice faster to dilute it, which is obviously what you're looking for. However, I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna stir like this. Roughly two to three minutes is what you want, depending on your speed. Now, I could spin it like really fast and do it in a minute if it was in a busy service however if you're relaxing you make it one at home just for someone to be nice and like use a nice martini take your time there's no rush about it as well the good thing about having a bar spoon obviously because it's got the spirals it's easy to twist and turn in the hand so i'm gonna mix this i'm gonna stir this for about two minutes well, the best way to know when you're done roughly is you see this little condensation on the side of the glass that means it's cold so you're looking roughly for that obviously if your hands around it you can feel it as well. It's ice cold. I'm gonna bring our glass back in. Obviously we need to dump this ice out, so I'm just gonna dump the ice into there. As you can see, you've got the condensation on the glass as well. You have a nice chilled glass. So for a stirred martini, you can single strain it. There's no ice shards um, that have kind of come separated because you've not shaken it, you've stirred it. You can single strain it. However, I would always recommend double straining it anyway, just in case. So we're gonna double strain it into our martini glass. There we go. Now, it will never fill to the brim. You don't want it from the brim. You want it about 
between one and two finger widths away from the brim. So as you can see here, it's about one and a half. If it's filled to the brim, it's a very unstable glass. It's gonna spill everywhere. That is a nice amount you want in it. Next step is grab our lemon. Now, as I say, because I'm using a, uh, a twist tool, it's a lot easier for me. If you're using a knife, just you have to slit it off and then slice it. But nice and simple for me anyway, I just grab this, I go around the lemon and I get a beautiful lemon twist. That smells lovely. This is our lemon twist here. Nice little trick if you want to get a nice spiral on it. What to do is wrap it around the bar spoon. Hold it in a bit of a position like here. Lay it down the spoon and twist it off the spoon. And we have a nice little lemon twist there. So once we pop that in, there we go. Now you can either float it or put it on the rim. I prefer it floating. I think it looks a lot nicer. I think anything on the rim kind of looks a bit tacky, but that's personally, if you think it looks better on the rim, by all means, stick it on the rim. But there we are, this is our stirred gin martini with a lemon twist. Okay, so that was the stirred gin martini with a twist of lemon. Now we're gonna move on to a shaken vodka martini with an olive. Let's get on with making that. First step, same as last time, obviously chilling our glass. I've got ice and water in here, so I'm just gonna stick that to the side. Always the first step, no matter what kind of martini you're making. Now we have our mixing glass. What we're going to do is we're going to add 50 ml of vodka into our mixing glass there. Same amount of booze. I'm just making a bog standard roughly with dryness because it's easier that way, but always check how much the customer wants. If they say medium, go for your bar spoon, go for your 5 ml of vermouth. Now grab the other part of our Boston shaker with ice, obviously. Put it on top, screw it with a nice hard tap, and we're going to have a nice long hard shake. So you want to shake till you get this nice crystallization on the side here, till basically your hand almost sticks to it. That is what you're looking for. So in case you've never broken a uh, Boston shaker before, if you have one, you probably have, but it's nice and simple. On the side like that, there we are. Bring our martini glass back over, empty it out. There we are. This is different to the, uh, the stirred one. You should always double strain this because you will have ice shards because you're shaking it. Strain it into uh, our glass here. And as you can see, it's a slightly different color as well. You get a slightly different color when you shake it, so it does make a difference. There we are. As I say, if you have a good fine strainer, it's a lot easier. This one is well past it. I need to get a new one, but I will. So that is our martini done. Now to garnish it, obviously this one is with an olive. Now there is a few ways to do this. I find the best way to do it is just either drop one in or two. What you can do if you want is you can stick them on a cocktail stick, stick them on the side or something, but I find it's nice to, to drop them in. Customers get to look at it. And that there is our shaken vodka martini with an olive. We have our two perfect martinis here. As I say, perfect is like a quote unquote thing that you can use for martinis. Actually, to be fair, it's something you can use for any drink, to be honest, because at the end of the day, it is personal preference. But this is the, if you could make it a perfect way, this is the way it would be, I guess. This is the way I like my martinis. I have a stirred gin martini with a twist of lemon. So this is the one I'm gonna try first because I know I like this one. Phenomenal. The reason I like this one, you get a bit of the floral with the juniper and the gin, and you get that beautiful citrus flavor and the hints on your nose as well from the lemon peel. That's why I prefer this one. I am gonna try the vodka uh, shaken martini with olives. I don't really like olives, but it doesn't flavor it too much. It gives it a bit of a scent, but not over. Not a fan of that. There's nothing wrong with the drink. Just personally, I'm not a fan of that. Hopefully you guys do try these at home. If you do, please make sure you drink responsibly. So that is pretty much gonna wrap up today's video, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you have, feel free to drop a like rating. It'd be muchly and greatly appreciated. If you guys are new in here as well, please make sure you click that button, subscribe, click the bell as well to join the notification squad. That would be absolutely fantastic. So I wanna get your feedback on this. Basically, this is a series that I kind of started about five years ago. However, the video quality wasn't very good. Uh, I wasn't very knowledgeable and the sort of stuff that I included in the video wasn't very good. So I kind of want to redo it, which is what I'm doing, obviously, starting with this. Make sure you let me know in the comment section down below if you want to see more of this. I also love to hear how you drink your martinis if you do at all. And I also want to know what you want me to do next for classic cocktails. Do you want to see the perfect old fashioned? Do you want to see perfect Negroni? Maybe you're not a fan of classic martinis and you may be a French martini or a dirty martini, some along those lines. Make sure you let me know in the comment section down below. If you guys want to check any of my social media out, links to them will be in the description. Other than that, guys, on until next time, I've been the Prentai, and I'll see you in the next one.
I'm about to blow Taking bombs, know it's on with the challenge And balance out the shots, what you got Spew mountains, so stay high In the ride, getting fly with the The Brent Eye